Okay, we know what a rat is, we know they're bad, we know they can carry disease and do a lot of damage. But if you don't see them or you don't hear them around your home, how do you know you actually have them? Well, this is where the County of San Diego can really help. On a sunny day in Vista, the rat man cometh. Rats are a creature of habit. When it comes to rats, Chris Rodeo says the cats meow. I think this is a rat killer right here. <laughs> Normally they're within 50 feet of food, water, and shelter. And it doesn't matter where you live or what your home looks like. We go into places like Fairbanks Ranch, um, La Jolla, uh, Del Mar. There's an abundance of rats. Dra rats are due to food availability and shelter. This house is not really trashy. It's very well maintained, basically, except for the openings that are allowing the rats to get inside. The openings, Chris's specialty, helping you find where rats are setting up shop. And he does that with a simple walk around the home. What I'm doing is evaluating the house to find the structural deficiencies so that they can be sealed so that it's easier to catch the rats. In order to solve the problem, you have to seal the openings and then trap only what's inside because then no more can get inside. All six of these screens are intact. They don't need to be repaired. The rats can't get in these. But the news is not good elsewhere at this one-story stucco house. Very typical. Things get overlooked by residents, but rarely overlooked by Chris. Pull back a juniper next to the garage. You see the grease marks on the wall? That's the rat going right up the wall. And it looks like he's eaten not only the molding, but some of the glass to gain entry to the garage. Then Chris takes a few steps back to get a better look at the roof. The next thing I would look at would be the roof overlap. And the roof overlap is right there. He uses a small telescoping mirror to get a better view using reflected sunlight. And you see how there's a dark mark there? That's the body of the rat, just like it is on the window, going in around that flashing. That brown mark or grease mark happens because rats don't usually clean themselves like a cat or dog would. Their fur rubs up against the surface and makes a mark. On the garage door, another hole. He needs only the circumference of a quarter. The only bones for say are in his skull. The rest is like cartilage, so once he gets his head through, the body just follows. This opening is big enough for him to get in. And keeping rats from getting in is the key. That's called exclusion. If you don't find out how they're getting in and you eliminate what's there, any new ones coming to the area pick up the urine scent and this is how they reinfest, especially if you don't do exclusion. That's the most important thing about rats is to seal the openings as how they're getting in the house. More on exclusion later, on to the backyard. Think about food sources, things like pet food outdoors, not stored in a sealed container. And on this patio, the homeowner puts out bird seed. Trouble is, birds have company at this dinner table. 90% of the people that I go to that feed birds attract rats, especially in this manner. But even in a bird feeder, because the birds kick so much out, the rat doesn't have to come into the bird feeder, all the seeds on the ground. But even off the ground like this is bad because rats can jump three feet straight up and four feet horizontally. It's not hard for him to jump from the ground into the bird seat. And once Mr. Rat has had his fill, he can easily go back inside the house. From the top? He doesn't need the tree. He comes over here and has lunch, goes right up the stick. And I would venture to say that the roof overlap here is open. And there's one right there. Or from below, an open vent into a crawl space under the house. To the rat, a hippopotamus could get through there. And rats breed like, well, rats. One time the property owner caught 46 rats on the patio alone. Now I'm looking at the rest of the house as to the sub vents and also the vents underneath the eaves. These vents look good, no openings. Then a check of the crawl space, which looks intact. It is intact. So this is not a point of entry. So it seems like the points of entry are on the patio in the front side of the house. Chris Rodeo started in private industry and then came to the county in all 40 years experience. 
What does all this cost you, the homeowner? Just a very small fee added to your property taxes. Now it's onto a backyard wood pile. This wood pile is fine because although it's not elevated a foot and a half off the ground like the codes say, there's daylight on both ends. Rats want total darkness. This does not provide total darkness. But sometimes plants can. Trim back dense hedges or ivies in tree limbs so they don't hang over your house. If fruit falls off your tree, that can attract rats. Even this old palm tree can be full of them. The reason I know there's rats in the tree, or at least have been, because there are some rat feces in it. These are old, but because they're old, means at one time there was rats in it. Up in the dense part of the tree, it can be very dark, perfect for rats. Then there's the old wooden shed in the corner of the yard. One time the homeowner covered up a hole but left others. Result, infestation. But you can see grease marks right here, and the rat is going in. He probably made this bigger. Looking at it from this angle, I can see indentation of the incisor teeth. There is another, albeit small, opening at the base of the shed. Once you open the door, you can pretty much guess what it looks and smells like inside. But this place has really been inhabited by rats. The grease marks right here are very, very black. It smells, you can smell the urine and the feces. Then an example of what is not a rat haven, a pile of yard cutting stacked on the lawn. This, somebody would think, would be a harborage for rats, but it's in the wide open. It does not provide the security that a rat would want as far as a home. Any predator could dismantle this little, these twigs and get to the rat. The rat wouldn't live here. So this is not really a harborage point. In all, about a half dozen places that need to be fixed at this house. That doesn't sound too bad, but it takes only one open vent, one quarter sized hole in the garage to start an infestation. The main thing is on your property is finding the openings. Look at your yard as far as food sources. Uh, eliminate as much harborage as possible, like wood piles, vegetation that produces total uh, darkness, like ivy or bougainvillea or hibiscus or even juniper, like in this front of this house. It gets so thick they feel they feel like they're invincible. They can live right there. The County of San Diego is not an exterminator. People like Chris simply give advice to anyone willing to listen, willing to rid their realm of rodents.